All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to explore uh, factoring in a more abstract sense. Again, this is a, almost a continuation of the previous uh, video I had on advanced factoring techniques and proofs as to why the AC method works and the slip and slide. Specifically, this is more of a proof of the formal proof as to why slip and slide works. So let's think about this from a sort of abstract sense. So if I give you x plus p times x plus q. We know that this is going to equal to x squared plus p plus q x plus p q. Now, what am I actually saying here? Well, what I'm saying, if we take an actual example, if I give you x plus 6 times x plus 7, and I factor this out, or foil it out, right? I'm going to get x squared plus 7 plus 6x plus 7 times 6, right? Um, let's literally see what's going on. So if I multiply these two together, you get x squared. If I multiply these together, we get 6x. These two, we get 7x. These two, you get 42. This 6 plus 7 is this 6 plus 7. 42 is 7 times 6. And that's all that this is saying. So this is sort of an abstract sense of writing a property that we're very familiar with. So we're going to assume, I'm going to assume that that is clear. And let's now take it, take this and let's play with it a little further. So this is useful, but what we normally have is we also have an A term in front. So what the, what the a term means is that the leading coefficient doesn't always have to be 1, right? It could be some, some other value, which we'll call a. So what I can do here is if I, if I distribute this a into each of these, we get a x squared plus a times p plus q x plus a p q, right? Now, when we usually look at this sort of notation, we usually see it as, in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And what, we can, what we'll notice is that ax squared matches up with ax squared. We'll also see that bx matches with a times quantity p plus qx. And lastly, we'll see that apq matches up with c. So from this, we can say b is equal to a times p plus q. And then we can also say c is equal to a p q. So hopefully that makes sense, right? All, again, all I'm doing here is matching these two together. And here we're matching these two together. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Well, I want to show you from this, we're going to, and when I say this, I mean I'm referring to here, I'm going to show you how this standard form is going to prove that slip and slide works. So recall in the previous video, I used a formal example, right? And in my, I'm used, I'm sorry, I used a specific example. And in my specific example, I started off by uh, writing 1 as 12 over 12, right? I was multiplying the entire expression by 1, which is 12 over 12. And the reason why I chose 12 is because it's the value in front. So here I'm going to take my original value, which was ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to multiply through by a over a. Now with a over a, what we did is I, I split it up. I wrote it as 12 times 1 over 12. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to rewrite this as 1 over a times a, and then the inside part is going to be exactly the same. So what now? Well, let's see. What did we do last time? So from here, we distributed the a throughout. So here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to distribute a throughout. 
what is this going to give me? This is going to give me 1 over a, and in the parentheses I'm going to have a squared x squared plus a bx plus ac. What did I do from there? Well, what we'll see here is once we distributed it out, we replaced it with a different letter. We said q is equal to 12x. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say d, I'm going to use a different letter, d is equal to ax. And keep in mind that uh, this right here is saying 1 over a, this is ax quantity squared plus ax times b plus ac. So if I substitute in d as ax, then these values here will become d. So I can say 1 over a uh, times d squared plus bd plus ac. And from here, let's see what happened. So if we look at this example, right, from here, we created a situation right here that is very easy to factor into such, right? And this, is, this was the benefit of the slip and slide method. Here, this is a little bit harder to discern what to do next because we have to somehow show that this factors into two factors, in this case, eight and three. All right, so how do we do this from a proof perspective? Notice that this is almost the same thing as x squared plus bx plus c. The only problem here is that we have an a here, right? So if I say d is x, these otherwise, outside of this a right here, they're pretty much the same. So, well, if I'm not sure what to do, if you're not exactly sure what the next move is, one thing that we do know is earlier we defined b as a times the quantity p plus q and c as a p q. So what can I do here? I can rewrite this as 1 over a and I'm going to plug in d squared Instead of b, I'm going to plug in what b is, and we discern that b, we said b was equal to a p plus q. And then we also said c was a p q. So this is b, and this is c, right? And let's, just to be clear, I'm just rewriting them with these two values. Okay, now we have a giant mess. But we can play with this mess a little more further. We can take this middle part and we can rewrite it as 1 over a d squared plus, if I distribute this out, I'll get a p plus a q times d plus now this is tricky but this is this is a kind of cool move here we can we can put these two together so we can say ap and we can say aq so this is ap times aq and there we have it now this is fantastic and it may not seem super clear as to why Something very, very cool is happening here. And what's cool is notice that if you group these, think of these as just values in and of themselves, then what you have here is the same thing as what I started off with without the A. So notice 
that P is a quantity and Q is a quantity, and we said that that becomes P plus Q and PQ. So if that is true, then over here, this is one quantity, this is another quantity, and these are the quantities squared. What this means is that this factors out to D plus AP times D plus AQ. Let's look at that. This is at one quantity, this is the other, right? So P goes here and Q goes here. Remember, instead of X, we have D. But after that, it's the same basic idea. So we're here. And the nice thing about writing it this way is that essentially, we're now right here. Right? And so the, the key now is they substitute, we su here we substitute back in what Q is, right? And this gave me the 12x and the 12x. Then subsequently, now we're here. And what we can do here is, in this move, they, we had a, we factored out a 4 from the first one and a 3 from the second one. Remember, 4 and 3 is 12, right? So what this is saying is that there's always going to be some factor of 12 that will come out to the outside. Right? And here we have, right? So that we can get to this step here that we cancel things out. So over here, what did we say D was? And this is the, this is the brilliant move. We said D was AX. So now, when I substitute AX back in, I'll always have an A that I can factor out, right? And there's also another A, which is important to have. And you may be wondering, well, why is that important? Well, if we factor out the first A, these will divide out. But we still ha need to have an A on the outside because we said that it will give us the factors that we desire which is P plus Q, I'm sorry, X plus uh, P and X plus Q, and we have this A on the outside, which we have to have because, remember, we have initially, right, we wanted it to be in, as in uh, where is the format? We want to have this format here of AX squared plus BX, which has an A in front of everything, right? But what this shows, oh, I'm sorry, this is why I was confusing, because originally this had A's here, right? So we want to get back to this, right? We want to have this, these being the factors. And now we see at the very end, oops, sorry about that, we, ha we have X plus P as the factors. So this is the proof why slip and slide works, right? And in essence, you create this sort of effect so that you can factor it out, the A value in common, and, and have just the factors that you need. So, pretty intense, but a pretty cool and pretty easy, once you, if you connect the dots, it's really not that bad of a proof to really understand. So, hopefully, uh, if you spent the time on these last two videos, I know this is pretty time consuming, but if you did spend the time, hopefully there was some insight that you've gotten to, into how proofs work, what really, this is what really what mathematicians do and show, and, you can see the power that it, the power of using variables is the sense that it doesn't matter what numbers I plug in. This will always work. So appreciate it if you've spent the time working on this. Um, and hopefully this brings some insight into uh, what the slip and slide method is. And in any case, um, let me know what you think and the comments. And I will see you guys in the next math video.